CataractCoach.com. Resident posterior polar cataract. A resident successfully does this case with professor guidance. This is a tough case. Now look at that characteristic demarcation line. Yes, there's some PSC cataract, but look in the very center, that round, very round, well-circumscribed area with a strong demarcation line. That's the posterior polar opacity, present, by the way, in both eyes. Patients also on the younger side, only about 45 to 50 years old. Now, I'm showing you the video at three times normal speed because it's a resident video and we want to see the whole thing, but we don't have the patience to sit through a 20-minute video. So we'll get it done in about six and a half minutes. So let's see the main incision being created here. And that's looking pretty good. And good job. Now, the rexus has to be accurate. This has to be a 5-millimeter rexus. Why? Well, in the studies published by Osher and Vasavada, we know that historically, about one in three posterior polar cataract patients gets a rupture of the posterior capsule. That's huge. So what we're doing is just marking with calipers to get an idea. If you mark 5.5 millimeters on the cornea, due to magnification effects, that's going to be about 5 millimeters on the lens capsule. So we want a nice, beautiful 5 millimeter capsule rexus. That is so important because... There may be a good chance we'll be putting in a sulcus lens. I want to have that support so I can get optic capture done. So the rexus looks great. Now, the key, do not do hydrodissection. Hydrodelineation is the key. There's the golden ring. Only delineation. No hydrodissection. Because if you do hydrodissection, that fluid wave goes along the posterior capsule, gets to that posterior opacity, and pow, nails it. Splits the capsule wide open. That's how you run into trouble. So instead, we'll do just hydrodelineation. Now, that is the yellow dispersive viscoelastic, and I'm doing a viscodissection. Now, the viscodissection is different. It's between the capsule and the cortex, and it's slow motion. That the viscoelastic goes back there and helps to tamponade or, or stop any break there. Plus, it's slow motion, and it helps separate the whole lens material from the capsule. Now that's been done, now we can go inside the eye and aspirate this out. Now, look at that, just the IA probe? Where's the phaco probe? Not needed. This lens is pretty soft. Again, the patient's only about 45-ish years old, maybe 46, 47, but on the young side, not much nuclear sclerosis. So we're gonna go in there with the IA probe and just aspirate this. Now the key, of course, in this, and this is where the resident has some trouble, is you need to keep the tip of the IA probe occluded with lens material. So get that bevel turned around. Feel free to move that around and aspirate all this out. Now, you don't need the phaco probe, I promise. If you use this proper technique, it'll actually aspirate very quickly, but the resin's getting a little stuck here, so we'll, we'll help out. Don't worry. I, I have faith here in this resident, but I'll also help. And we want to get this lens material up out of the capsule bag, right? I, don't want, I want to be away from that posterior capsule. Now, using this viscodissection technique and other techniques, we've featured, by the way, at least 10 different posterior portal videos on cataractcoach.com. If you haven't studied them, you owe it to your patients and to yourself to go to cataractcoach.com. Use the search engine. Type in polar, P-O-L-A-R. It'll come up. You'll learn a lot. But we've been able to accomplish probably about 1 in 30 risk of having a posterior capsule rupture. So 10 times better than the old historic 1 out of 3 risk. So there you go, lens is cleaned up nicely, and go inside there and take out this cortex now. If you see any smudgy stuff on the posterior capsule, please don't touch it. The capsule may look okay and normal, but it's super weak. So now look, I don't even let the AC collapse. I'm gonna inject viscoelastic as the resident pulls that eye probe out of the eye. The trick there, of course, is to start injecting and then to go to position zero, keep injecting, and then pull the probe out. Don't keep the probe in position one because you'll just wash out that cohesive viscoelastic. And see, there's a little bit of remnant there on the posterior capsule. We don't mind. Get the lens in. Did you notice, too, by the way, the marks on the cornea? This patient needs a toric lens. The patient has about three diopters of corneal stigmatism, and we want to address that with a toric lens. If you break the capsule, well, so much for your toric lens, right? So let's, let's be cautious here. In the U.S., at least, there are no toric lenses that are suitable for sulcus placement. Not that they're FDA approved. So there's the lens going in. Notice how as it was delivered, the lens just snuck under that nasal capsule rex edge, and the lens did not touch the posterior capsule at all. Now we're just doing a little capsule polishing. I'm just using the psychodialysis spatula to help with that, to clean up things here. 
And that looks pretty good. Now, look, I'll seal the incision first before removing this elastic. Why? Remember, I don't want fluctuations in the pressure there. I don't want that posterior capsule to be under any stress. I don't want it to break. So I don't want the AC to flatten. So after the viscoelastic is removed from the eye, we get the lens rotated in the correct position. I need that eye to stay inflated, and that means the incisions are sealed so the eye doesn't collapse. So now we're gently going to rotate it, and I'm going to lift the optic up. Look, remember, it's a toric lens. you got to remove the viscoelastic from behind the optic. So I help the resident by lifting that optic and then going underneath it now. Now the viscoelastic can be removed very nicely. Get the lens back into position. And now we can just do a fine tuning of the lens position, being very careful just to rotate and not push posteriorly. And once we have that lined up with the marks on the cornea, that looks pretty darn close right there. We can come out of the eye, but don't come out yet. Inject first with the other hand. You got it. Let's seal up that incision. And we do a little viscoelastic sweep here at the end. Beautiful results. So nice case. If you have a posterior polar case coming up, don't be surprised by it. Study these videos. Don't look just on YouTube. Go to cataractcoach.com, search for the keyword polar, posterior polar, and you'll find these videos, and you'll have a much nicer outcome, and your patients will thank you for it. I'm happy to report this patient had a beautiful visual outcome, achieved the desired refractive state, and even signed up for the other eye. Thanks for watching.